I like my job. It keeps me busy. Maybe too busy. Hello? See, I'm a reporter. Hello? I cover stories. Today I'm starting a story on drilling exploration in search for energy. Oil and natural gas, that is. Coffee. Oh, I need coffee. That's a good thing, too, because I'm having a hard time finding my energy level this morning. It never occurred to me until recently, but petroleum and natural gas products are very important to our daily lives. You know, flip a switch, pull a lever. But is it really that easy? I can turn a knob and cook a killer omelet. I can even drink out of the plastic milk carton, thanks to petroleum. Oh, it's 95. What would it be like without these products? For one thing, I'd probably be a lot hairier. Can't use a blade razor. Sensitive skin. Great. Anyway, whatever reason, I'm asking the question. How exactly does energy exploration work? How do we find a barrel of oil or a cubic foot of natural gas? Funny, that's exactly what my boss said. Then he told me to find out. And make it quick, son. The news waits on no one. Yeah, petroleum's in the pharmaceutical business, which is a good thing, because I've already got a doozy of a headache. Well, that's 85. So, back to business. After a slight delay, we're on the road to find out what it actually takes to find these precious resources. Our journey begins at what I describe as a normal-looking office building an oil and natural gas production company. After passing an extensive security check... Hello. So there's probably not a gun or anything in it. Don't say gun. I got a steel plate in my head. It's a kitchen appliance accident. We were issued badges and escorted to someone called a team leader. So... This is Command Central, huh? Sorta. Of. I lead a group called an asset team. It's made up of about seven people, each handling a different area of responsibility. So I'll bet they call you like General Glinda. No, 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 no. I help coordinate and make sure everything is moving along. We think it's important to build strong teams that communicate. It's nice. You know, tell me, how do you know where to drill? Funny you should ask that. I'm going to let our geologists explain it. They're down the hall, third door on the right. Down the hall, three doors to the right. Three doors. Okay, thank you. Have it was fun. so good to see you, Glenn. Three doors down the hall to the right. One, three doors. A geologist. Ha, huh, now I'm cooking with gas. A person who actually has rocks in their head, so to speak. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are you the, Hi. uh, the rock detective? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you could call me that. Come on in. I, I just need to, uh... <laughs> what do you do exactly? Basically, my job is looking for different formations of rock and trying to calculate where the oil and natural gas is. So you, you read rocks? Sure. Right. <laughs> By understanding the rocks and sediment formations of the past, the insights we learn help lead us to areas that have the best chance of finding oil and natural gas. So, all day, you play sure rock homes looking for clues. Well, <laughs> it really wasn't funny, was it? Yeah, well, basically, uh, but my job's more about understanding the earth and its processes and then being creative with that information. That means finding the best place to spud a well, drilling to the profitable formation, hit my TD and make a profitable well. So what do touchdowns and potatoes have to do with your job? Well, that's just drilling jargon. It's oh. slang stuff. It was just like, gotcha. TD means total depth of the well, and spudding means starting to drill the well. Now, since I wasn't there a million years ago, all I can do is take the information available through rocks, well logs, and seismic data, then try to predict where the oil and natural gas are located. Predict? You can tell the future? Can you read minds? What am I thinking? Or do you use the magic eight ball? Will there be a well this week? 
it's not like that. I mean, we calculate as precisely as we can. And See, nowadays we drill a lot deeper, so we use a lot of geological data and 3D seismic to see those depths and make better predictions. Now, as a geologist, I have to coordinate with personnel in the field and at the office. The geophysicists, the engineers, the landman, the safety and environmental guys, the mud loggers, and the drilling foreman, basically the whole team. Right. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, this is uh, Derek. He's a geologist. He's a part of our team as well. Hello, Derek. Mark David, Action News. How are you doing? Uh, good. Uh, so you guys must have a pretty high success rate here, huh? We try, but it's still risky. Did you know that only one out of five wells drilled in the United States actually discovers oil or natural gas? What do you find the rest of the time? Salt water. You know, scientists believe that this area was covered by the ocean millions of years ago. Hey, uh, you guys got any big tuna down there? Because you know I'm big. Mm. Fisherman. I gotta go. Well, no tuna, but hopefully natural gas and oil. Watch this. As we strip away sections of the earth, you can see layers of sedimentary rock. These formations can be miles below the Earth's surface, and the petroleum is actually trapped in these layers. As we magnify this area, you can see petroleum trapped in tiny holes called pores. Wow, that's, that's deep. So what happens if you strike out? Well, all the money spent drilling well, is lost when it doesn't pan out. Wow, talk about job security. Now, it's time to talk to our geophysicist. He's the team member that provides me with all the seismic data. He's out on location today. You want to go out and check it out for yourself? I am game, girlfriend. I was given directions to a remote location where I found the geophysicist standing next to a strange-looking vehicle. Hey, Mark David, Action News. Hi, I'm Paul McColgan. I'm the geophysicist for this project. I'm going to meet you, Paul. <laughs> Those are some nice wheels. Huh? What are they used for? Well, these are actually called thumper trucks, or rather, vibrosized units. Vibrosized units? Well, we use it during a seismic survey. It sends sound waves below the Earth's surface by thumping the ground. We can also perform a seismic survey by using explosive charges underground to create sound waves if a truck isn't available. Explosive? I mean, isn't that kind of a, a big boom type of thing? Well, no, usually it's just a low rumble and a slight ground shake. I bet you scare a lot of earthworms doing that type of deal. Well, probably, but basically the process works like this. Let's go take a look at my laptop. Well, I had a couple programs running on my laptop this morning, so it's already on. Here, take a look. Here's a cross-section of the land showing a thumper truck on the surface of the land above several buried rock layers. The thumper truck sends sound waves underground. Each time the waves hit a new layer of rock, some of the waves are reflected back up to the surface and some of the waves continue traveling downward. When the waves are reflected, the data is collected on the surface by geophones and recorded by a computer. Okay, seismic in simpler terms. Basically, seismic is similar to that of sonar or on a ship. You, like, you detect submarines. You boat. Bring her down, Captain. That's right. So basically, what happens is the ship will emit a ping of sound below the surface of the ocean. It's like a ping. That's right. Same. That's a ping that you hear all the time. Okay. That ping will reflect off the hull of the ship and reflect back up to the surface where the ship records it. Now, from all the data that the ship's recorded, they can tell basically about how big the submarine is and exactly where it is. In seismology, what we're doing is basically the same thing. We emit sound below the surface of the Earth, and every, every time the sound wave goes through and encounters a new rock layer, Part of the energy is reflected back to the surface and is recorded by the geophones on the surface, and the rest of the energy continues on through the ground. And we use that kind of information to detect what kind of densities there are and velocities of the rock. Wow. I mean, I'm feeling pretty dense myself. The seismology and gramophones are pretty Einstein stuff. Yeah. I mean, Albert Einstein. Today, we can record a lot more data than we used to. Now with computers, we're able to do a lot of our stuff in three-dimensional imaging. So instead of looking at seismic lines, we study 3D shapes to help determine a drill site. We even get to use these special 3D glasses. The bad thing is you look like a dork wearing them. Well, Paul, that's a lot of good information. I think we're ready to get our little sound bite here if you're, if you're all game. You ready? Sure. All right. Let's shoot the deal. Paul McColgan. McColgan. <laughs> McColgan. That is <laughs> McColgan. All right. All right. It's got to get warmed up. Get the book. Uh -huh. All right. Here we go in three. 
Mark David here for Action News with Paul McCool. Ooh, <laughs> this never happens. Hello? Linda here, just checking in. Do you understand the geology and geophysics of drilling now? Are we taxing your brain? <laughs> I think so. So what, now do we drill? Well, we can't yet. Now we have to determine if it's economically feasible to drill. There are a couple of guys you need to meet. Come on back to the office and I'll Bye. set it up. See ya. I'm on my way. <laughs> Please be on your best behavior. These are the bean counters. <laughs> beans. I love beans. Beans, beans, a medical fruit. <sighs> Mark David here for Action News. I'm here outside of the office of Reservoir Engineer Chris McCarthy, a.k.a. the money man, the dude with the dough. Let's see how it shakes down, takes down, makes a breakdown. Mark David, Action News. It's a pleasure and a challenge to meet you. A challenge? I, I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Shush. Let's have a talk. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is you who either red lights or green lights every single project. You. Is that correct? You. Correct? I don't know if I'd say every single project. I, I take the area that we chose to drill, how much it's going to cost to drill the well, how much it's going to cost to put the well, complete the well for production, and decide if it makes economic sense. So in essence, it is you who has all the power. You. Linger? Okay, now I can move on. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd say all the power. Uh, if it doesn't make economic sense, then we just have no reason to drill it. Uh, we have to look at how much oil and gas is actually down there, how long it'll take to recover it, uh, what the price is at the moment, and what the price will be in the future, uh, not to mention the taxes, securing the leases, and the mineral rights. Uh, every cost needs to be analyzed to see if it's uh, worth the risk. So mineral rights, what exactly are those? If, if you want to learn more about the mineral rights, maybe you should go talk to the landman. The landman! The landman. He's, we, we got a few of them out there scattered, uh, scattered throughout, the, throughout the state. And how would I find the landman? Uh, I have a few of them marked here on the map if you want to go find one. Groovy and gravy. All right. Well, this is Mark David signing off for now as I go find the landman, the man of the land, the grizzly Adams of the new millennium. And we're out of here. Bye, chicka. Crow feet, peace. So off we go again, tracking down the landman. A turn here, a dirt road there, a little help from the neighbors. Can you help me get to Highway 7? Ah! It was an adventure. And guess where I found the landman? On somebody's land. Imagine that. Hi, are you the landman? Yes, I'm Chip. How are you? Good to meet you, Chip. You must be the landowner. Good to meet you, sir. Um, and we are here um, doing a story on the oil and natural gas process. Wondering if you could maybe fill me in on um, exactly what does a landman do? Since we don't own the rights below the surface we've targeted to drill, we have to secure permission to drill from the mineral owners before we can start. Oh, I see. So you negotiate the whole win-win situation. Well, I'd like to think that we both end up benefiting from the deal, yes. I'm going to tell you what, how about you just give me like the Cliff Notes version of this? Well, first I research who owns the land and the mineral rights, and in most cases there's several mineral or royalty owners, and we also have to work with the surface owners so that we can drill on the land. The goal is to negotiate a fair price, the win-win situation. Sounds like you've got a rough job. Well, not really, but it does take time to track down all the owners. Speaking of which, um, I'm supposed to send you over here to meet the drilling engineer. Another map. <laughs> okay, well, uh, boy, you can, there's a lot to this process in there. Yep. Good luck. We'll be on our way. Uh... So, back on the road again. There's a lot of work that goes into searching for energy. Right now, I'm starting to feel like I'm on a scavenger hunt. Only I'm not looking for pink flamingos, but a drilling engineer. Another part of the energy puzzle. No, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. Get him stop. Stop the van. Thank you. <laughs> hey! Hello. Oh. Are you the uh, operations engineer? No, sir. I'm the health and safety director. I've been expecting you. Oh, I'll bet you have. What do you do? I make sure the operation is in compliance with regulations and make sure that everything goes by the book. Yeah, I guess you could get pretty hurt out here if you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> we definitely fit that profile. <laughs> no, you guys, we take safety very seriously out here. Need hard hats, safety glasses. We got to get you some seal toe boots, too. Everyone must obey the regulations. You're going to have to lose that tie. Follow me. 
All right, ready? Let's roll. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Mark David. I'm here on drilling location. Got my steel-toed boots, got my goggles, got my hard hat, and I'm here with drilling engineer Jeff Day. Jeff, what do we got going on over there? Well, Mark, we're getting ready to drill a well. Um, the first step we got to do is survey the site, prepare the location, and uh, make sure the drilling personnel and equipment have easy access. So you got to build some roads and uh, bring in the port of johns huh? Yeah, we're going to build some roads, uh, grade the land, and establish our environmental practices. Then we're going to put together an office area and, and uh, other facilities. And are you ready to start digging? Well, we're getting ready to spud one right now. Spud the well, like, you know, potatoes underground. I mean, start the well. Seems start again. No, no, Mark, what we do is we bring a special truck in here that's got an auger on it. Uh, we use an auger to drill a wide, shallow hole in the ground called a conductor hole. Oh, kind of like a pilot hole. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a pilot hole, and we, we seam in a large uh, steel pipe in the ground, and what that does, it prevents the, uh, the soft rock on the surface from caving into the, into the well bore. After we get that done, we drill what we call a rat hole and a mouse hole. What we use these two holes for is to store pipe in place so that we can go ahead and make connections, which we do in the drilling process. Anyway, I tell you what, we got one running a couple miles from here, another rig. Let's go take a look at it. You know, time is money. Okay, uh, great. This is uh, Mark David. We're going to head out to the next place. Back to you, Stephen. Tell you what, I'll meet you over at the truck. All right, no, I'll be there in a second. Rat hole, mouse hole, what do you think? How many holes are there? Can I give this to somebody? Okay, time out. I've almost lost track of all the holes that need to be dug for a well. Conductor holes, rat holes, mouse holes. Sounds like I need to dive into a foxhole. What's next? On this location, we're preparing to rig up. Uh, so do I uh, need a tool belt? I already got the helmet. No, we'll just watch. So even though these rigs weigh hundreds of tons, they're movable. So they can be taken apart, then moved to a different location, put back together again to drill another well. So, so it's like those those Happy Meal toys. You can like snap them open and, they, and then you put them back together. It's like a robot. No, it's a house or a car or like Lincoln Logs. It's not like any of those. It's well, like an erector set. Well, kind of, but there are no toys here. Well, no, I. So the, <laughs> we're so the rig, the rig's modular in design. And so then it's assembled by the rig crew and kind of pinned together with these strong pins. Strong pins. And, and then the most recognizable part of the rig, that big steel tower called a derrick, is pivoted up into place. And this brace back here behind me is used to support the derrick when it's laid over. Let's go over to another site and I'll show you the actual okay. drilling in progress. All right. Dude, that is one tall tower. Well, some of them are even bigger than this one. This one's about 120 feet tall. That's about 12 stories high. Dang. See, they've got to be big to support the weight of the drill pipe and the tools. Sure. Today's drilling process is called rotary drilling. That's because there's a long line of pipe with a drill bit on bottom that's rotated deep in the ground, cutting through layers of rock. Uh, layers of sediment rock. I remember that. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it takes a Whoa. lot of it takes a lot of equipment and power to make one of these rigs work. Right. Let's go get a closer look. Let's you go over this one. Dude, we need that super big wide big dog lens. Just keep to... just keep shooting. You're getting great stuff. It takes a lot of power to drill three miles deep. We're gonna go out here and I'll show you where we generate all that power. Here you go. You're going to need these where we're going. Now, Mark, this is what we call a bit. You know, I got bit by a dolphin once because my, my no, pores no, secrete. Not, uh, not, not that kind like of salmon. a bite, okay? A oh. bit, okay? And we screw these on the end of the drill string. I see. And as we turn the drill string, okay. 
the, the bit cuts the rock and crushes right, and the rock, and that's the, how we drill. And you can oh. see there's three of them here. Yeah, this, I the can one count. here is for the softest rock we drill. It's like the silver. The, the, the one in the middle would be for an intermediate type rock, and then the Fancy one here on this end is what we call a tungsten carbide which, bit. Which removes plaque. Well, no, tungsten carbide is what we drill with when we were in hard rock. Tungsten, I see, yeah. tungsten is, is the second the hardest thing known to man. Second, and the first would be algebra. Would, no, would be diamond. Diamonds, okay. that was, I was gonna say. It'd be diamond, and, and as we rotate the bit, the, the cone turns, and then the tungsten tooth crushes the rock, and we circulate that rock out of the well with the mud, and that's how we drill it out of there. Do you ever like, what else you got? Come on, let's go see some drill bits okay. in action. Can I get one of those to take home? After you, gentlemen. No elevator or escalator? Nope. Just a billion steps? That's it, Mark. Here, let me help you with some of that. Your partner's a lot of help, isn't he? Wow. This is pretty impressive. What's going on here? Well, as the drill bit is drilled deeper into the ground, the roughnecks add new sections of pipe. This is called making a connection. It's like that reality dating yeah. show. And each joint of pipe's about 30 feet long, and it's very heavy. That's the reason the derrick and its hoisting system are vital components of the drilling rig. The hoisting system on the drilling rig is used to raise and lower equipment in and out of the well. All right. Now it consists of the draw works, the crown block, the derrick, and the traveling block. It's heavy, and I know it's loud. It's very loud. It is. Okay, and it's all run with the prime movers, which we've seen down below. Sounds like multi-level marketing. It's not quite. Okay. So this is how they move the drill string around. That's right, yes sir. By reeling in the steel rope, the roughnecks can raise and lower the equipment, which we do quite often. How do you know that you're drilling the well straight? We measure for it, okay? We use a technique called directional drilling. Um, let me check with the uh, directional tech downstairs, Brian, and he might be able to explain it a bit better than me. Great, thanks. Sir. Jeff for Brian. Uh, Roger, Jeff, this is Brian. How can I help you? Yeah, I got the action news up here on the rig floor. Um, anyway, they would like to know about directional drilling. Do you have a minute? Uh, bring them down. I'll uh, show them the process. Uh, thanks. Back down. Back down. Do you have any oxygen tablets? No, we don't, Mark. Let's Ibuprofen. Magazine. Good afternoon, Mark David, Action News. I'm Brian Roy with Marathon. Excellent. Uh, what do you got going here? Have you ever heard of directional drilling? Directional? No. I could use some directional guidance, though, if it's just meaning, just talk me through it. It might be easier to show you. Come on over, have a look. We can pinpoint a small area thousands of feet below the surface. This is the target that our geoscientists and reservoir engineers think has a good chance of finding oil and gas. We drill down and veer off to hit it usually within a few feet of our target. We can even drill horizontally if we need to. This is possible by sending probes with accelerometers and gravitometers into the well bore that measure the direction the hole we're drilling is traveling. So it sounds like a guided missile, huh? Well, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Measuring inclination or angle and direction of the hole and adjusting our drilling so that we guide the well bore to hit the specific pay zone. All right, I get it, good. Figuring it all out. I've been really glad to have these computers, you know, to, for all the calculations. Absolutely. I have a Casio. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me, I mean, how do you get the crushed rock from out of that hole? You know, how do you keep it from getting clogged up? That's easy, Mark. What we do is we pump a thick liquid called drilling mud down the drill pipe. Drilling mud? You know what? I saw that up on the rig. That's right. Tell we me a little bit more about it. that. The drilling mud we keep in these tanks over here, these, these round tanks. And that's where we store it. And we use these big blue units behind me that are mud pumps. Okay. So they pump it down the well bore. Basically, it's hydraulics in action. Excellent. I've got something over here in my truck that might simplify things for you a bit better. Certainly. Okay, well, let's head over there. As you can see, mud is pumped down the drill string. The mud jets out of the bit and into the well bore where it helps lubricate and cool the bit. As the mud flows back up between the drill string and the inside of the hole, it picks up the rock cuttings and carries them to the surface. Okay, so what happens once you get the cuttings out of the hole, Jeff? Come with me and I'll show you. 
More stairs? More stairs. Had a feeling. Initializing hard drive. All data will be lost in three, two, one. Not the best view coming up these stairs, Jeff. Now the mud is running across a series of vibrating screens that separate the rock cuttings from the liquid. That way we can reuse the drilling mud. Okay. This is also where the mud logger collects his rock cutting samples so he can send in periodic reports to the geologist. Okay, but well, what I want to know is like, who's the lucky guy who gets to mix the mud? Well, usually it's a roughneck. Sounds like the guy used to ram my head into the locker uh, in high school. This is a really nice guy. Would you like to meet him? Yeah, I'm sure he's a really nice guy. Okay, yeah, let's check him out. Mark David here again for Action News, and I'm about to interview myself a genuine roughneck. Bill, tell me what it is that you do here on the big rig. Well, my, my job is maintaining the drilling mud here. I mix up the mud in these big hoppers, and then we check, see if we need to put any additives or different kind of mud in it, depending on the specifications of the rock that we're drilling into. I think what we really want to know here, Bill, is do you ever take off your shoes, you know, mix it with your feet, and yeah. squish the mud in between your toes for that that oh so fresh feeling, or you know, put it on the face, clean out the pores, ever? No, we uh, we pretty much have to do it according to the specs of these big hoppers. The pressure's monitored on the drilling floor, and then the mud engineer, he checks the weight and viscosity and combination of chemicals to determine what it is we need to do if we need to make any corrections. So you don't ever make mud pies or have a mud fighter? Make mud angels? No, there's a lot of money on the line here and uh, every job is important to the success of this well. You're a pretty serious guy there, Bill. What high school did you go to? Can we cut? Jeff? Let's see if he's awake. Welcome hey, to Mud Logger Shack. Hey, Mud Logger. Yes, sir. So you study mud? Not exactly. Okay. I catch the cuttings that come out of the well bore, bring them down here, clean them up a little bit, then bring them in here and analyze them for rock structure. Uh, take a look at what formation we're in, uh, correlate to what depth, because that's that's real vital information for the geologist. Uh, what I what I do is I bring the samples in. I'll take a look at them under this microscope, kind of tell exactly what formation it is, and then I'll hit them with this black light. Black light. Because hydrocarbon bearing rock will actually glow green under a black light. Oh yeah, I know what a black light yeah. is. I know all about the black light. It's wow, wow. Yeah, kind of thing. Okay, so let's just say that uh, now they've already drilled the well, and the rock samples contain um, you know oil and natural gas. How do you know it's going to be a producer and not just, you know, kind of, <clears throat> kind of fizzle out? Well, I, I can't tell that from here. All I can tell is that there's hydrocarbons present. You need to talk mm -hmm. to the well loggers to see how much is there. Well loggers. Uh -huh. More loggers. Okay. Mud loggers, well loggers, drilling engineers, geologists, mud engineers, geophysicists, roughnecks. Drilling a well clearly takes a team of specialists dedicated to their craft. Yes, sir, I am. Are you That's okay? Great. Um, I'm fine. It's a little heart attack. What's your story? What's your story? What's your story? I'm called in near the end of the drilling to determine if the well is going to produce enough product to be worth it. And uh, how do you do that? Well, first we send our instruments into the well to collect important information for the company that's drilling the well. The information we collect tells us three things. One, are hydrocarbons down there. Two, if it's wet, meaning if there's salt water in it. Three, what are the characteristics of the rock? Is it shale, limestone, sandstone? And if it's porous or non-porous? So what kind of gizmos do you send down there? Highly sophisticated, sensitive instruments. So you just, you drop a tool down the hole and you just record the results? 
Yeah, something like that. But every well is different. What do you do with the info you collect? Let's go back to the information trailer, and I'll show you. Down again? We send it to our customer via satellite feed, which is transferred to a landline, and then winds up on their computer screen so that they can evaluate their data. Ah, so it's like instant gratification. Yeah. Speeds things up out here. Time is money. It helps determine the depths of good zones, prepare the well board for perforating, and the evaluation of the rock to see if it's productive and maybe need fracturing. Well, fractured, perforating, yeah. Don't worry, it's okay. They got you yeah. set for that tomorrow. 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 Oh, thank you. Oh. That's right. <laughs> You've only seen the half of it. You think there's more? A lot more. We're just going to show you some wells that have been determined to be producers, so we need to show you what happens when the well hits its TD, and we start the completion process. Don't forget, you're going to need your safety equipment. I know. I, did, I didn't forget, and I won't. I'm just a little pooped, and I just need to call it a day. So I, I won't forget. Sounds good. Mom. As I dragged my tired, achy body back to the van, I started thinking about just how much petroleum and natural gas touch our lives. From plastics to medicines, energy to drive our cars, generate electricity, heat our homes, to even cook our food. Then as I waved goodbye, it really hit me. The magnitude of hard work and dedication that goes into drilling a single well. Gosh, I was worn out on all I did was observe. I never dreamed it took so many people to drill what I thought was just a hole in the ground. And tomorrow, I'm going to meet even more who helped turn these fossils into fuel. Which reminds me, I need to refuel my belly. I'm running out of gas fast. Bottom line, it takes a lot of energy to actually find energy. I've got to find some energy of my own before tomorrow's adventure. I need to recharge my battery.